You heard that? All right, so uh, we can go to Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 15. So I'm excited to share this today. This is um, a section of scripture that has always meant a lot to me. Uh, I heard it. Oh, jeez, that sounds really bad. 18 years ago, I was 18 years old. I feel like I was just 18. <laughs> so I heard somebody teach on this, and um, it really blessed me. And at that time, I had been wanting to write music and write songs, and, uh, and I would never written a song. But I kind of wrote one for Kelly when we were dating, but it was kind of cheesy. I don't remember. I don't quite remember how it went, but, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so I heard this teaching and then um, this song just plopped into my lap. And that was my first song ever written. And uh, and that was, it's one of the, well, no CDs here, but I need to be, get better at selling those. But on my album, that, it's one of the songs we recorded. So we're going to look at the Forgiving Father section, or they call it the, uh, the Prodigal Son. <clears throat> That's how all, all my headings in my Bible say that, the prodigal son or the lost son. And really, when you really get down and look at this section, and what we're going to look at um, is that it's two lost sons, completely lost, just as lost as the other one. Um, they just showed it in different ways. And it was something uh, at the time that I heard this that I'd been dealing with was because it's going to be, we're going to look, be looking at license which is licensed to do whatever the heck you want, and legalism, which is a very strict thing. Um, but both of them are the same coin. They're just different sides. And uh, they both actually end up, you can take different paths, and they both will intersect and meet up in the same spot. <clears throat> just basically a pit of hell, really, for, for the person. Um, we're going to look at the, the first son ended up with the, hogs and the second son he he should have did that i mean he might as well have been with the hogs also um, so we're going to look at that the two sides of the same coin license legalism the effects of both and then kind of what jesus does here is is a parable of uh, a uh, parable he he shows kind of, he shows the heart of these guys and how they got to that this point that they the heart that brought them to their point of need, very heavy need in their lives. And we're going to look at this pretty closely. And um, and then we're also going to, it, God, or Jesus Christ really shows God's heart. God's heart to his people um, and how he sees his people, even when we're going through a bunch of crap. So, we're going to look at this, but first we're going to start, and it, it starts in verse 11, the parable of I call it the lost sons in the forgiving father. That's my title. Um, it starts in verse eleven, but before we get there, we're going to go to we're going to stay at fifteen, but uh, read verse one, <clears throat> just to give us some context to who Jesus Christ is speaking to at this point. And it says, uh, "Then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him." And the publicans were the tax collectors. <clears throat> they were the ones. They were collecting tax for Rome. And if you were collecting tax from good Jews to give to the Romans, you were not considered very up on the scale of good people. Um, but I believe a lot of them got there because they were kind of excommunicated from the church. And once you were excommunicated at that time, you could do no business really with the church. You had to like go get your, do business elsewhere. Um, and so they had to make a living. So they, you know, signed a deal with the devil, according to the Pharisees and the very religious people back then. So these guys, they drew near. Uh, they drew near unto Jesus, the publicans and sinners, to hear him. In verse two, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, "This man receives sinners and eats with them." So that's who's there. We got the publicans, the sinners, and we got the Pharisees and the scribes. So we'll take that up. Now here's what 
who, who Jesus is talking to. <clears throat> so let's go down to verse 11. And Jesus, he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. <clears throat> and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the young son gathered all, gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Riotous living. So, we're going to go back and look at these verses a little closer because there's a lot of things to look at here <clears throat> to kind of give the heart of this kid, the young son. Um, the first off, the first thing that you popped out to me is in verse 12, it says, And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods. So, what, uh, what are the portion of goods? It's his inheritance, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. my kids don't get a bowl of cereal like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to say, Dad, give me a bowl of cereal. <laughs> They might wear a bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was the first thing. I, I was like, hello, you know. <laughs> Give me my inheritance. Give me my inheritance. I mean, it kind of shows the heart of the kid right there. I mean, he, is he a little entitled? Yeah. A little unthankful? And I just thought, you know, we could... You know, and this is to his father, so it's like more real. Like I would have, I would have been. You know, <laughs> they didn't spare the rod. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> you know, think about this with God, and how oftentimes, you know, sometimes we can get to where we're God, you know, and lose thankfulness. I think he just, he really lost thankfulness, um, and, and he just give me. Give me the portion of goods. And, and really, we'll co uh, compare and contrast this because, I mean, have we all heard this story all the way through? The, when he comes to himself and he's, it, he, he doesn't go to the Father and say give anymore. It's a little different thing. And uh, I think that's more of the you know, better approach. So we'll see that. But um, give me the portion of goods. Now, Every other translation that I've read is uh, property or estate is goods. Give me the portion of property. Um, so it's kind of a big deal here. I mean, if their estate or their property or their wealth was their land and their harvest and the things, you know. So what would the dad have to do in order to give this to him? Or, or I guess he could deed it to him, but then what would the son have to do to which he does and takes to a, a far, far away land? He'd have to sell it. Right. You know, and when you got land as a farm, that's constant, you know, crops are growing, and the smaller the farm, the less <clears throat> crop, the less... And the, the, the dad's not even dead, you know? He's like, he still needs that to live off of. But the father gives it to him. The portion of the property that falleth to me, and in, he divided unto them his wealth, is what uh, New American Standard. He gave them the wealth. <clears throat> and I thought, uh, you know, what does God really just want for our lives? Because, I mean, the Father here is obviously God. He just wants us to be blessed. The Son comes, give me. He's like, okay, well, you know, here. I love you here. You know, and God has given us and trusted us. He never put any conditions on it. <clears throat> you know, he gave us the spirit. He's given us eternal life. And he didn't say, now you have to behave a certain way. This is what the father is doing here. He says, okay, here. And he divided unto him, them his living. Um, <clears throat> and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. So, I, I just kind of, I just kind of thought, what is the son saying here? He's saying, I don't need you. I just need your stuff. 
And, and not only that, but it says he took his journey into a far away country. He took it. He went way away. He got as far away from the Father as he could. He dipped out. He's like, I don't need you. I got this. I know what's better to do with this probably than you do. He was just an ungrateful little... <laughs> you know? And he's like, I got this. Give me my stuff. I'm going to go do better. You know, I've been living in your place under your rules. You know, give me this. I'm out. And he went to a far away country. And there, what did he do? He wasted it. Wasted its substance with riotous living or loose wild or free from restraint. He just went hog wild, <laughs> as you see. Uh, he went crazy and he just blew it. Um, loose, wild, free from restraint. It's also the same word. I thought this was just inter interesting. And Ephesians says, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess. It's the same word as excess. You know, wild. You know, he just lived excessively. In 14, when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want or impoverished. So he wasted all the substance with all that living, and I can just picture him. He's in the bar buying everybody drinks. Everybody loves him. He's got the girls all around him. It was probably more like a brothel is what I'm guessing. But, uh, and when he had spent it all, and so... He went there, he's in this faraway land, he blew the money, but he's probably got a job now, part-time or whatever, just to make ends meet. But then what happened? A mighty famine, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want or impoverished. <clears throat> so, you know, he lost all his money, he was making it, he was doing okay, Dad, I don't need you, see, I've got this stuff figured out still got my job and then recession or depression hits and it's like uh oh and he was impoverished and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and that word join doesn't really describe what he did he was so desperate at this point that that word joined is actually the word forced himself upon he wouldn't take no for it he's like begging people I have to I have to have something give me something give me something he was done he was destitute, out of money, broke, shoeless, penniless, um, and he forced himself to, on a citizen of that country, and the citizen said, well, okay, you can go into the pigs, or to the field and feed the pigs. That's all I got for you. <clears throat> so here's this kid, a position of honor at his house, a son, an heir, um, squanders the whole thing and now he's living with the worst place a good Jew could be with the pigs and he's living with the pigs so he's gone from in Georgia we'd say from sugar to <laughs> <laughs> and he probably literally was in the crap but um so he's in the fields feeding the pigs, and he would have, would fain have filled his belly with the husks. He would gladly have eaten the husks that the pigs ate. And these husks, husks were these things called carob pods. We've seen them. Well, I don't know if we've seen these because I think this tree is, or bush is kind of specific to Middle East or whatever. But it's those crescent shape, shaped. Uh, tree pod things and whatever they're just nasty and I was looking them up this morning they still, uh, still they use that for feed still um, and then I found some little hippie website where they're like well you can eat this and <laughs> <laughs> I was like anything to be different or stupid one of <laughs> but he gladly would have filled his belly with the those things that the swine did eat, and no man, nobody gave unto him. Now he shows up into this town, living this party life. I'm sure he had a lot of good friends, huh? 
when you had lots of money. <clears throat> but now that he's broke, busted, with the pigs, no man gave unto him. And, I'm, you know, at the time that, you know, I was taught this section, it was a time when I had gone through both of these sons' journeys. Because uh, I was the pig kid <laughs> for a little while, and then I tried to clean it up, and I was the other kid. And uh, but I, I remember thinking, you know, when I was the in the crap with the pigs and stuff, I thought I was so cool, and I was pretty popular. Uh, and I thought I was popular for good reasons. It, I, there was a funny story. I I skipped school the day before. This was my junior year. And then I think I showed up late the next day. I'd skipped the first half. And so there was some little freshman girl sitting outside. And I said, hey, hey, hey come here. I need you to write me a, a letter because my handwriting was chicken scratch. They would have known right off the bat. I mean, she didn't do much better. I think she dotted her eyes with hearts. I mean, it, was so, it was supposed to look like my mom's handwriting. But I, so, I, so I, I'm telling her what to write. And I, and I said, yeah, my son, Aaron Schaefer. And she looks at me and she goes, you're Aaron Schaefer? Yeah. And I was like, oh, dang, I'm cool now. <laughs> <clears throat> it wasn't until later that I found out what, like, okay, so I, I had a reputation, all right? I guess, you know, this little girl had heard of me. And the, like a little while later, I heard some people talking. They're like, no, I ain't going to do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. They're like, oh, go tell Aaron. He'll do it. And I was like, oh, is that my reputation? <laughs> I was like, so she was like, oh, you're Aaron Schaefer. Oh, you're the dumb. <laughs> willing to do anything but when I quit that stuff I didn't have a single friend I mean not a one and then when I quit the real hardcore religious stuff I didn't have but I had my wife come with me that was it we had nobody else it was her and I <clears throat> nobody around nobody or my best friends I'd gr grown up with nobody so that's where this kid was at. <clears throat> Nobody left on his own, uh, wasted everything, just broke. And I love this next verse. And it says, and when he came to himself, and this was a big moment, and I know we all hit this moment. And I love the word came. It says to come from one place to another. That's the definition. He had been there, and in his mind, he came from that place of squalor, living with the pigs, starving to death, and he went to another place in his mind, and he came to himself. And it was himself that put him there. He realized this. It was all brought <coughs> to himself. He couldn't blame it on anybody else at this point. Dad had given him the whole thing. He, w he could have gone out there and made a big name for himself, but he's living in that squalor, and he came to himself. Here's where I put myself. And he hit a rock bottom. There was nowhere else to go. No friends, no money, no food, no nothing, and there was no one else to blame. He came to himself. And I just asked God, just help me come to myself quick nowadays. You know? <laughs> bring, me to, bring me around to that spot, and God does that for us, so he lovingly brings us around. Now, when I was a kid, it took him a lot you know, you know the good thing about this father and what God does is He lets us go. He lets us go. You know, it's it's a free will thing. He doesn't want robots. And it's it's up to us whether or not we're going to go and seek the Father. We came to Himself. He said, "How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare?" and I perish with hunger. The hired servants. Now these weren't like doulos, bonds, you know, bond servants. These were just the daily workers. And that's going to kind of be important. We'll make a point out of that. But they were just, you know, day laborers. You, you went behind Home Depot and picked them up in the morning and then <laughs> <laughs> dropped them off in the evening. Uh, you know, they didn't really have, you know, they had no real meaning to the farm or anything. And he's saying, 
just even those guys can't have food. And they have enough to spare. You know, and I'm sitting here with the pigs. This is it's all coming to him now. <clears throat> He's realizing it. He says, I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father. And that's what I just think that's so cool so cool that you know, he had to make that decision. I will arise, and this is our decision. We need to, you know, realize if we're butting our heads up on something, it's a constant thing that we're always going to be learning. God's always going to be drawing us in, correcting us, bringing us back. It's nice to be actually willing to have him do that instead of like this kid was, you know, so stubborn for so long. Now we can pray to God keep us humble. But um, the father, where was the father? He wasn't there, but I'm sure he was praying. I'm sure he was, you know, wanting his son back. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. And I think this is a great a great lesson in true repentance, too, of a true repentant heart. Um, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, make me as one of thy hired servants, those hired ones. Not, not of any importance, not of anybody, but just make me as one of those hired servants. And he arose. That sometimes takes a little bit of a guts, you know. <laughs> He arose and came to his father. So he's, he arose, he's heading, he's walking back to his father. But, and I love this but, because this is, this is God's mercy, grace, and his love right here. Because he ar- arises, he's walking back to his father. But, when he was a great way off, when he was yet a great way, way off his father saw him and this is what God does for us and this is why I think it's the best because when he was a great way off his father saw him why did he see him because he was looking and he was a great way off so he was scouring the horizon (coughs) you know he wanted his son back he was worried about about his son. They knew what, as we'll read, they knew what was going on. They knew what he was into. They knew everything he was into. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and did what? He had compassion. Didn't have judgment. Didn't have condemnation. Didn't have, um, you know, come running at him with a big stick. (laughs) Even though... It says he had compassion and ran. If I was that kid and I saw my dad run, <laughs> uh oh, I'm in. I'm in for it now. But I, I thought this is just such a great illustration of God's heart. He doesn't want us off in the hog country. He hates it more than we do. He saw him. He had compassion and he ran. He did not walk. He was coming to get him. And he fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Um, make me as one of thy hired servants. This is what he originally said, make me as one of thy hired servants. But does he get that out? It says... I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. 22, but the father said to his servants, he interrupted him, he couldn't even get it out. He didn't want a hired servant, he wanted his son. And Jesus knew this when he was telling this story. 
That's why he left that out. But the father said to his servants, his doulos, his bond servant, he's different than the other ones. These are the ones that would have been a family honor, but that would have been with the father. The whole, the whole village was not, the whole uh, household <coughs> was not out there at this point. The father ran. The doulos followed. And then he says, bring forth the best robe. And let me, re- let me uh, read this to you in the Greek, how it's supposed to be written. Quick! Bring forth the best robe. Quick! Get the best robe, the robe of honor. The, the robe of honor, or the robe that would have made him the son. No way. He said, quick! It was only them. It was only the father, the bond servant, and the bond servant says, and the son. And he says, run, get the robe, the best robe, put it on him, put the ring on his hand, the signet ring, the ring that would allow him to conduct all the business of the household. Put that on him and put shoes on his feet. Slaves didn't have shoes. Servants didn't have shoes. Sons wore shoes. Put the robe on. Put the ring on. Put the shoes on his feet. He didn't want... And how do you think he looked? No shoes. Tattered. Starved. He didn't want him for another second to look like that. And he didn't want anybody to see him in his shame. You know, and that's what God does for us. He... You know, when God takes us back, he, he conceals it and He puts us back as sons and daughters and puts us back to our rightful dignity and honor. And it's the same thing we, we do, especially if you're a bond, bond servant. We don't reveal somebody's dishonor if somebody confides in us either. We hide that. <clears throat> we treat people like God does. Put the shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let's eat and be married for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. As opposed to him beginning to be in want. (laughs) As before. Um, The son knew the father. He didn't know him in this light now. If he had known him like this, he'd have never left. You know. He thought he didn't need the father. He thought he was smarter. Um, He was ungrateful. And he really the the main thing was is he just didn't know who the father was. Now let's we'll look at the uh, elder son, and we'll kind of look at uh, their similarities because they both kind of are the same. So, <clears throat> now his elder son was in the field. Good, studious elder son, always working. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto them, Thy brother has come, thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and he would not go in. Now, I mean, if my sister like took you know, a third of my dad's... Uh, stuff and went and wasted and then came back my dad was talking, I can actually see how he was angry. <laughs> like, what the heck's wrong with you, dad? <clears throat> um, so he was angry, he would not go in and so his dad came out and entreated him. And he answering his father, and this, this reveals really uh, the heart of this guy. The heart of the religious. And Remember, who was Jesus Christ talking to? He was talking to the Pharisees, and he was talking to the sinners. And he was 
This was for them. This is for the Pharisees here. And so here, this answer is so revealing. He says, Lo, dead, <laughs> these many years do I serve thee. Now, did, did his dad want another servant? No. He just wanted his sons, right? But here's this kid. I've served you. His dad never asked him to serve him. He, he had a, his, his own rope and all that stuff. And he says, neither transgressed I any time thy commandment. You know, I've done everything you've said. There wasn't been one time where I haven't listened to you. I've done everything you said. And yet, you never even gave me a kid. I mean, let alone the fatted calf that dumbass just got. <laughs> you never even gave me a kid. That I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this, thy son was come, and it's really, uh, it's when this son of yours came, this, you know, what do you really want to say? This idiot son of yours comes, which hath devoured thy wealth, thy living, and it's, notice how he says that, has devoured thy wealth, thy living. All the other translations say wealth. It has devoured your wealth with harlots. You know, I just wanted a little goat for me and my friends. You've given this fat, this, this kid, your son, a fatted calf, and he was with harlots. <clears throat> and you killed for him the fatted calf. Now let's flip back real quick. Well, let's okay. Let's keep reading. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead <clears throat> and is alive again and was lost and is found. But So let's go back to verse 30. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, your wealth. Now go back to verse 12 real quick. So, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto who? Them. Them. So who else had their portion? And you know that, that he was the older brother. And in, in, from what I read, Jewish custom was the older brother got two-thirds. The younger brother got one-third. So he had it the whole time. When the father says in verse 31, Son, now it forever are ever with me, and all that I have is thine. He had already given all of his entire estate away. The younger son took one third, the older son had two thirds, but all the older son did was go out there, work, and was resentful the whole time to the father, saying, I'm just serving you out in the field, working my soft all the time, and you don't even give me a kid. He didn't know the father. Right. And he was there. Mm -hmm. He was with them. You know, the, the, the younger son, he was a great way off. He was a, went afar. He didn't know the father, but here's this guy there working day in, day out, and he still didn't know the father. Mm -hmm. And that's the religion. And what happens then? Because he was self-righteous at this point. I've been busting my butt, serving you all these years, you haven't given me a chance. You know? <laughs> Father's like, you, you don't know me because I've given you everything. Everything I have is yours. You could have had it any time you wanted. We could have had a million parties for you. <clears throat> and it's interesting that he resolves the first child, the young son, in this story. The second one, mm -hmm. he leaves it open because he's speaking who? to the Pharisees. He leaves it open. But they've been there, they've been working, and they felt entitled. But they didn't know the Father enough to just ask Him. And what happens when you're self-righteous is, well, you're obviously not going to live up to the standard of God. Um, so what standard do you start setting? Better than the other guy. <laughs> and you start judging the other guy. <clears throat> 
And this is what, here, here's where this son was at. And he's just looking at his brother like, look at what I've done. Look at everything I've done. I deserve this. He doesn't deserve this. And the father says, you just don't know me. I just want my sons. I want you to be blessed. I want my, uh, your brother to be blessed. And uh, he says, son, thou art ever with me. He says, or y'all read a different translation, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. But these Pharisees, they didn't. They had no clue. They didn't know God one iota. All they knew was the, you know, take all the steps to look clean, to make yourself feel like maybe God would throw me a bone, I guess. Um, but he had the fatted calf the whole time. But it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. <clears throat> He had it the whole time. He didn't know the Father. In his righteousness, he didn't feel like he deserved it. I'm sure. He's saying, I followed every commandment you ever give. I've never missed one, you know. And you never even gave me a kid. I mean, his expectations were so low. But look at, I mean, really, when we base God's blessings on our life off of our own works, our expectations better be low. <laughs> And if you're really honest, I mean, they will be. But if we base it off of God, His love, His kindness, His goodness, and then our righteousness off of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us, then we get the party. We get the fatted calf. We get to enjoy the Father, but the whole point of that story is neither of them knew the Father. At least one son decided, I know where I can be blessed. Even if I'm just a hired servant, at least I'll be near my Father. You know, this son was yet to be. Uh, Jesus Christ left it open, like an open ended thing to the Pharisees, which I think is pretty cool. But, um, so, anyways, I really love that section. And that's what I wrote my first song off, so I thought I'd sing you guys the song. All right. <laughs> This is on your CD, so when you ever bring some, more. <laughs> I know. It's on iTunes. He's on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, you can rip it now, so it's, <laughs> it's all it's like it's free. So this is called Forgiving, Father. And I did not practice it. I figured I'm going to remember it. <laughs> you did? <laughs> okay. Through the darkness I could see his light Shining on me and guiding me back home No in the wrong I had a song in the night Telling me that everything be alright One day I finally came to myself What's the use in living like hell? Well I arose and started to walk he saw me coming a great way off, and then he came running to me. Now I'm back home where I belong with God, loving me and calling me. Joy to be in this family To know Him is how life was meant to be 
One day I finally came to myself What's the use of living like hell? Well, I arose and started to walk But he saw me coming a great way off in there He came running to me Oh, my father came running to me Gracias.